Okay, so we're going to start off talking about a process called the stages of change. Anytime a person makes a decision to change a behavior that they've identified as problematic, they're going to go through a process that we've identified, a series of stages. It's sort of like the stages of grief you've probably heard about. You know, people go through the anger and the denial and the acceptance bargaining stage. Same thing with changing a behavior. And so we identify five stages that a person goes through, and this is really helpful. Bottom line is for helping a person establish a solid foundation for recovery because we can use these stages of change to be able to see where they are in the process. And I guarantee you, whenever a person relapses or experiences what we would call quote-unquote treatment failure, you can almost always identify something that went wrong by looking at it with regard to where they're at in their process of the stages of change. So here's how this works. First stage, we call the pre-contemplation stage. This would be the denial stage. A problem exists, but you don't see that there's a problem. That's your parents telling you, you've got a drug problem. And you say, no, I don't. That's the denial stage. Many of you can remember and when you were in that stage, or you may still be in that stage. Okay, second stage is called the contemplation stage. We begin to take a look at this problem and begin to weigh out, do I think this is a problem or not? We start, we weigh the differences between the, the pros and the cons of engaging in the behavior, the, the benefits versus the risks. We might take a look at where did this, my chemical use get me? versus where I want to be in various life areas. And eventually, if we arrive at the conclusion that, yes, indeed, I believe this is a problem that I should change, then the third stage is going to be we're going to call the preparation stage. We begin to make a plan. What am I going to do to overcome this problem? Then the fourth stage we call action, and that's where we implement the plan by engaging in new behaviors. Now, notable here about the action stage is it should last three to six months. Think about that one. That's an important thing we're going to be focusing on a little bit later here is it shows how long it really takes to develop a routine of doing these new behaviors. It's not just, okay, novelty, that this sounds like a good idea for a little while, for a couple weeks, I'm going to engage in these behaviors. They've got to become routine and so that we get to the point of not thinking about it, but our lifestyle has actually changed. And by doing that long enough and consistently, that eventually moves us into the fifth stage, which we call the maintenance stage. It's characterized by consistent, again, there's that C word, the consistent symptom-free behavior. That's the goal of when you sign up for drug treatment and acknowledge that, okay, I realize my drug, my drug use is a problem and I need to change that, that's what the goal is. Consistent, symptom-free behavior. One of the biggest problems, right off the bat, I'll share with you, that this stage is a change model can be used to identify is the fact that we might be fired up and motivated and agree for a little while that yes, my drug use is a problem and I ought to change it, but get back to that person six months later. And do they still see it that way? Are they still motivated to be engaging in new behaviors? Have they developed a new routine? Unfortunately, a lot of people who have developed a drug problem don't end up in that category. They might talk about it for a little bit, they might get a little bit motivated while they're doing some contemplation, but if we end up skimping on these previous stages, we never get to the maintenance stage. So let's go back in a couple of general comments or general rules about stages of change. First of all, you can't skip stages. Again, what I was just saying, what, when some people think they're in the maintenance stage, I'm doing fine, and they just began this work two or three weeks ago, and they say, I'm doing fine because they haven't smoked for two weeks. I'm doing fine. The reality is that they have not gone through all the stages and put this solidly in place. And one of the biggest problems, as I said at the beginning, you can usually identify what went wrong when a person relapses by looking at something through these stages and they usually end up skimping, going too quickly through and not solidly enough 
in one of these stages, either the contemplation or the preparation stage. Because think about this. The biggest reason, the number one reason for treatment failure is what they would call premature withdrawal from the treatment process. That's a big fancy way of saying quitting before you're done. Now, what ends up happening, and, and you might say a person's getting ready to relapse, or they're at the time that they relapse, two of the most common things that you hear a person say is, one, I never believed I had a problem to begin with. If you end up saying that, it's really simple. You just have not done enough contemplation work. Because if indeed your drug use is a problem and you're still not believing that or being able to see that, you just haven't done enough contemplation work. Second thing you might hear a person say is, I'm tired of all this treatment stuff. I'm doing fine. I want to quit all this. And again, if a person says that, we're going to look at the preparation stage here and say, well, evidently you just didn't get the plan. Because I'll guarantee you in any treatment program, they're going to be telling you about the fact that engaging in this process has got to be a long-term deal. If you start off treatment in residential treatment, you're going to have to go into some sort of outpatient care after residential treatment. And then that should include aftercare and you should be involved with the professional help for, on a long-term basis. If they're going to talk about 12-step recovery as part of your plan, a lot of people get out of treatment, they go to a few meetings, but then they stop going to meetings, and that isn't really how the plan is supposed to work as far as participating in 12-step recovery. So when a person gets to the point of saying, I'm tired of all this, I'm doing fine, it goes back to, well, you just didn't understand all the implications of the plan. 